Hello. Hey guys. <laughs> it's Friday. We made it through another lovely week. So we're back. Anyways, so we're here. I think we're going to be making something today. That's usually what we're, we do, isn't it? Yeah. We make something. Yeah. <laughs> today we're going to I'm just going to make a little round bottom bag with a gusset in it. And yeah, a lot of people are concerned about putting a gusset in. And I'm going to do uh, a gusset which is folded with a hidden stitch on the front and a, a, a visible stitch on the back. So, okay. So, so two different stitch lines. Yeah. On the gusset. And you, you could do them both. The same? The same if you wanted. Sure. It, it would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> that would be tricky. But anyway, we're going to build the whole bag. Woohoo! Okay, well, let's get started. What we got here? Okay, uh, I've got just some odd lot leather that we had out in front there. Uh, so just a nice know, brown. Yeah. This is pretty heavy. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. It's probably what seven to eight ounce or probably at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So pretty seven, stout piece of leather. Yeah. Just a nice brown. Yeah. For the guts that I had it to, I split it down a little bit, but you wouldn't have to. I just did it to make it simpler to do, uh, you know, on camera. So we're gonna do that, and also. For the strap, I'm going to make a two-piece strap because everybody, when after they've done laid out all their patterns and everything, they say, "Man, I don't have a piece long enough for the strap." Oh, right. So, so we're going to do kind of a rustic two-piece strap. Okay. So let's see. This is Denny's got a little pattern here. This is what we're making today. It's just a pretty simple, small bag. Yeah. With the flap that comes down. Yeah. There's two pieces to the bag itself, and the gusset, and. Uh, a couple little tabs for the the handle and the handle itself. Yeah, that's all. That's really pretty simple. Yeah, I hope. We We're hope. Not done yet. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get. All going. right. First off, let's. Uh, I'll mark it. I'll lay out the front of this. And I always use a dead weight set on top of my pattern. It just makes it work. Those are just so handy. Yeah. I'm just marking around the pattern here with a stylus. Cut it out. Handy dandy head knife. Yep. This stuff cuts pretty nice. It is. It's really firm, but it's got um, it's got a good oil content yeah. to it. Yeah, it's so it's like it's, nice and oily. Yeah, yeah, pliable. It's got a good feel. But don't, but don't ask us to buy it because we don't. Yes, yeah. this is the one and only piece. <laughs> come in and come in and look around. You can find something. <laughs> okay, that was quick. Uh, yeah. Now let's mark the back and front flap. And I just kind of cut these pieces out a little oversized so I had plenty to do it with so I wasn't fooling with a great big piece of leather in here. That mark. It's kind of a like a possible bag. You could do this out of a real soft leather. It'd make a pretty neat little yeah. possible bag, I think, for all you buckskinners out there. <laughs> I was gonna say we're almost making like the weight of this. It's it's gonna be kind of like a saddlebag. Yeah. Yeah, this would be great. And this piece of leather that I found wasn't big enough for a full set of saddlebags, but it would be great. It would be a good great one, yeah. Way. Okay. I've already got this. I cut these handles out, and I'll show you about them after a while. I've already cut a piece for the gusset. So. <clears throat> how, how wide is your gusset piece? This is a three-inch gusset. Okay. You know, but that's, it's optional. I just pull that out of the air. Should, yeah, however big you want your bag <laughs> yeah. to be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the pattern back on here. And I'm going to mark the center of the bottom. Like that. I'm just making myself a little reference mark here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the front. 
And when I made this pattern, I just folded it, folded the piece of paper in half and, and drew half the pattern, you yep. know, and so I knew what the center was. <laughs> and that way it's symmetrical. Yeah. And I'm going to do the same thing on the front of this. And this is, like I said, this is just a reference mark. Now I'm going to take my gusset. And this gusset is over length. You know, if I went around this. You've got quite a few inches. Yeah, I got, I got plenty left. So. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to mark the approximate center of this. So I've got a reference point there, too. Yeah. And the, <clears throat> before I go any further, I'm going to uh, bevel the edge and, and burnish the parts of this bag that I'm not going to be able to get to very easy after it's all stitched together. That's right. Then we had somebody, they, uh, Terry, ask, what do you put inside the dead weight and what leather do you use? The dead weight has a lead shot on the inside. Which is uh, really the only thing that we found. We, we've tried a lot of different materials inside, and then the lead shot is the best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because the weight is what you're after. Yeah. So, and anything else that you use, if you use sand or some people said BBs, you know, BBs aren't as heavy. Sand is definitely not as heavy. No, we tried sand. It didn't work. It was a... I think I made this joke the other day. It was a lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Um, and then for the leather, I think this one is just a veg tan. You can use, I wouldn't use anything with a high oil content just because you don't want it to leach out right. necessarily onto your projects. But right. a lightweight veg will break in really well or a non-oily oil tan. A thin upholstery leather would work. Yeah, thin upholstery works good. Mm -hmm. Deer skin works. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have a scrap of old deer skin around, you know, that, what do I do with this? Make a dead weight out of it. We all just have scraps of old deer skin yeah. laying around. <laughs> you know, uh, you can make them real stiff or real pliable. I like mine real pliable. You know, that way I can just kind of toss it around and drape it over the edge or something. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Your seems familiar ask, is it better to have a gusset? leather thinner is it better to have the gusset leather thinner he said he's using about not, an eight ounce and then a thinned gusset but he you weren't specific as to what we thinned it to yeah it's not necessarily better it doesn't necessarily make a better gusset if you want something that that accordions nicely you mm -hmm. know that you can mash up you know mash flat you know something thinner is definitely better if you want something with a lot of body you know use a heavyweight leather but, yeah. the thinner weight is easier to, to work with yes yeah. much easier well, and I think it also depends on the style of gusset that you're putting in. So like Denny said, he's doing um, a style of gusset where he has one side will be sewn face to face and wrapped around, but then the back side will be sewn um, edge to edge. And so you'll see the, the back side edge of it. Right. Um, if you were doing both edges that were wrapped or so I think his front edge is actually going to come around the front of the bag and it's not going to fold in like this front panel isn't going to, to fold I think it just really depends on the style of bag because there's a lot of, like your really high-end classy bags, you want that edge to be super thin to yeah. roll. And then a lot of times you'd even be putting maybe a, um, a like a cording into the edge yeah. as well. And so that would need to be quite thin in order to accommodate all that. There's one right behind your head, Liz. Oh, yeah. So this bag. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. You're welcome. What is in here? Just the insides. <laughs> Just the rest of it. The Larissa bag. Just pretty, it's pretty great. Yeah, so this, this bag, you've got the two, you've got the two edges that come up. And she, she probably bell knifed the edge of both of these. But this is, um, oh, I don't know, probably a five to six ounce oil tan to begin with. The cording was probably split down, down to about an ounce and a half or so. And then, and then these panels were bell knifed um, to allow that to fold and create this really fine gusset. Yeah, this is a really nice bag. It needs a little. It needs a little love. Yeah, it needs a little saddle felt. Yeah, it does. Didn't let's do. Let me do something. <laughs> <Just a second. laughs> yeah. 
And right now I'm burnishing the edge of this. This is an oil tan leather. So I'm using this uh, Toco Pro to uh, burnish this edge. Works really well. Uh, you know, on on a vegetable tan leather, I like water and saddle soap, but uh, Glis uh, glycerin saddle glycerin saddle, saddle soap. soap. Yes. There's so many types of saddle soap. I feel like we should specify. Yeah, but uh, that doesn't work real well on an oil tan or a chrome tan leather. But just Toco Pro or or uh, Tokenol mm -hmm. or uh, Gumtrag, any of those. Uh, Commercial mixtures work pretty well on a on a oil tan leather. Yeah. Um, Tony, what happened to my question? No, I thought you read them all. No, there's one more. The bottom one. So seems familiar. Ask if you're doing a gusseted pocket that you want to lay flat when empty. Is V gouging and folding the best method? A gusseted pocket. Uh. Probably, uh, yeah, it depends on, on what it is. If you're using a vegetable tan leather, you can wet it and actually uh, fold fold it without to V gouging. Mm -hmm. You know, you can actually wet form that to that crease into it. Well, and depending you know, you on can tap it flat. But, I was gonna say, depending on how much volume you need inside that pocket, you could make it to where like the pocket would taper down to the the front or the face of the bag, and you wouldn't actually maybe have a gusset or very small gusset at the bottom, and then you would have like a V shaped gusset that goes yeah. up to the top, because then that would lay flat. That's really gonna depend a lot on the material that you're using, how flat it lays. Right. Right. Okay, I'm gonna set my wing dividers. At about, and this this is just what I'm doing on this particular project. But I'm going to go about three sixteenths of an inch. Denny's using a ruler to set those wing dividers. <laughs> I know you guys are going to ask me exactly how how wide this is. So I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm going three sixteenths on this side on this uh, project here. But I'm marking the front of this uh, bag. Then I'm going to get my handy dandy scratcher, or they they call it a rougher here. So, but I'm going to I'm going to scratch this little part up carefully. Hopefully, I'm not going to go over this line. But uh, sometimes that's why I like sandpaper a little bit better because you can just hold it right up to the edge yeah. of the line and sand. It doesn't get quite as deep, but it's I feel like it's less hard yeah. to mess up. <laughs> yeah. It worked up. I started with this, so I guess I'll finish. No, yeah, you're good. You're good. I also don't own a leather rougher at home, so sandpaper is my only option. These scratchers are, they're basically a wool card. I don't know if any of you have ever seen or, or heard of a wool card, but they just got little prongs on them, you know, that will really eat on you. Yeah, watch your fingers. Yeah. I want to do the same thing on this uh, this gusset. It's really what most people have trouble with on the gusset is is their uh, glue job. They they don't glue it well enough to hold until they can get it stitched and. And the leather will want to crawl, you know, yeah. one side will crawl away from the other side. Pretty soon you've got a job for a finished article that uh, the guts it is, is actually crooked. Yeah, that's no good. That's um, on Wednesday when Terry and I was making uh, our lovely little clutch. That was the one time that we used glue. Um, for most of this clutch assembly, we used basting tape. But when it came to gluing in the gusset on either side, we actually glued the pieces together yeah. because if you try to just tape it, it's going to want to move on you. Right. And this oil tan leather is the worst. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to actually double glue this. Go all the way around here. Another good thing about the oil tan, though, if you get glue where it doesn't belong, you can always rub it back off. Yep. Denny, Greg asks if, or Gray, sorry, Gray Viking asks if you ever thought you'd be a YouTube star. No. 
<laughs> I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know I'm a star now. But uh, <laughs> I know yep. a lot of people watch this and laugh at me. <laughs> Not with me, at me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just an old country boy. Me and John Wayne, you know. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to some John Wayne recently. Have you? Yeah. No, I got that backwards. Johnny Cash. I've been listening to oh, some Johnny God. Cash. I don't know <laughs> why. It's the same it. thing. <laughs> been listening to him on those movies. You know, it's both the yeah. horses. Every time I think about Johnny Cash, it's just a song that's trotting along to like a horse horse beat. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hurry this. Pick it up, that handy bit. dandy hair dryer. But really, on this, if if you uh, put one one layer of your cement on a light, you know, just a light thin coat. Let it dry till it's not tacky, and then uh, put another one on. It will hold twice as good. And your your glue in here today it's it's warm and, and <laughs> fairly dry, so the glue is setting up pretty quickly. If it was damp and cold, the glue would take a long time to set up, right? Denny, Josh noticed something about your left wrist there that has a tan line on it. He hopes that something didn't happen to your awesome watch. Oh, my awesome watch. Yeah. Actually, I, I broke the the expandable band on it. I've got to get a new one on it. Uh -oh. No, no. So something did happen, Josh. Something Good eye. Did. It was it was a catastrophe. Um. <laughs> was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put it on and it went. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> that quick. But thanks for noticing. <laughs> thanks for noticing. I thought he was going to talk about your other wrist and how it was green. Oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> That's the side I'm on. <laughs> I didn't know it was green. <laughs> when you, when you, this is how nervous you guys make me. <laughs> it's turning when you green. Sweat with copper on it makes your wrist green. I could probably saddle soap this bag for the next couple. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to hair dry this again. Then we're about ready to the... Let's both side on. Both. I was just thinking about this. You guys notice a lot of really embarrassing stuff. <laughs> All right. Now then, um, <clears throat> those reference points that I made, uh, I made a, a reference point in the center of the gusset and in the center of this bag front. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Another thing that i got to tell you, I'm going to do this inside out. So when I roll it, it'll be right side out. But so I'm face gonna, to face. Yes. So I'm going to start and put those two center reference points together. 
just like that and then I'm just going to work my way around hopefully this may be a deal where I just have to uh, work my way around on the machine itself <laughs> yeah, I think it might yeah. Denny, Jessica asked if you do anything to keep your saddle soak soft. No, you keep it to keep the lid on it. You're using it. No, but the saddle soak will use it a lot and you won't have to worry about it. I was gonna say, you're I buying think, a new can. I think Denny goes through saddle soak both, more than the rest of us. <laughs> to have problems when I leave my my shearling in it that I'll get some mold going on well yeah if you don't use it for a while mm -hmm. just, just hold your nose and <laughs> just keep <using> it <laughs> <It's> fine <laughs> now I'm going to take the duck bill pliers and just kind of set this cement here make sure I've got it glued pretty pretty good uh, firmly I don't know if you can see it, but when I made the turn here, I, I lost a little bit of ground on this, but, but it'll still stitch up all right. All right, now I'm going to make myself a mark here at the, where I want to stop my stitches. Then I'm going to uh, grab myself a stitch line at 3 sixteenths <laughs> of an inch. Specifically. Specifically. All the way around, and when I when I stitch this, I always stitch the uh, the gusset side. I don't stitch the bag side. Cause you just want you want to make sure you're hitting that gusset one way or another. Right. And this bag design is really pretty nifty. That is a beautiful pack. Okay, I'm going to go over to the machine and stitch this front part. We brought ourselves in the infamous Class 26 today. But I think I probably ought to give myself a little practice piece here. Mm -hmm. I set it up yesterday evening and hopefully no one Nobody. has unset it up. Also, you should probably remember to backstitch. Okay. <laughs> but only if you want to. <laughs> More embarrassing stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll put you still there. I don't know if you're using yeah, still there. Not I think I will. Um, All right. I'm using a, a size 138 red, and about a 24 needle here. That is a beautiful stitch. It'll do the same thing in the bag. I'll just build it this. <laughs> Whoever made this belt made it for me. Oh, the spring that leather is, one. That is <laughs> Have we uh, commented on that before? I think we showed them on, we on Wednesday. Wednesday. That guy does some beautiful work. You probably did beautiful work too, Butcher. Oh, now you got your hand out of the way. Look at that back stitch. Now I'm back with three stitches on this because this is the this is part of the bag that Could you use your roller edge guide on that? Good. Uh, you could. I'm not going to on this because I might end up having to, to work the guts of one player or another to keep it on the edge of the bag. Like this part I'm coming up to here. Will you hold tight right there? Alright. Hold, hold tight. Liz, uh, wait. 
Will you ask that question that we have there while I move this camera? Oh, well, yeah. So, I can here. so Paul asks, I've watched a lot of your videos. Very good. Thank you, Paul. Uh, what, in your opinion, is the best project for somebody that hasn't done leather work? I mean, a wallet is, is usually a pretty good starting point, depending on if you want a tool or not. Um, but, you know, assembling a wallet is, is pretty straightforward. Um, and it can, you know, it'll get you some hand sewing. If you want to tool a wallet back, you can do that, kind of cutting out your insides, um, that kind of thing. Like, a, I don't know. Wallets can be pretty advanced or they can be pretty simple, depending on, on what you do. Um, I always like holsters, I think are actually pretty quite simple. So if, if you'd be interested in, in holsters, there's a lot of videos out there on that. Um, once again, you'll get some hand sewing. You can do some stamping if you want. Um, but like edging things and, and that kind of a situation, you'll do a lot of that with, with holsters as well as, you know, learning how to mold leather is always, is always a pretty good thing. Um, really just small projects. A watch band would probably be a pretty good little simple project. Yeah, watch lots of YouTube videos. Watch us a lot. Yeah, just, <laughs> just keep watching us and all those other wonderful YouTubers yeah, out there that do there leather stuff. Lots of them. Any, yeah. Anything you can imagine, someone's got a YouTube video on it. Pretty you much. Yeah. Pretty all much. right. Well, you're ready to go. So just, well, we won't talk during it. If you if you have something to say, then we'll stop sewing. Then we can say because the compression kicks in and out. Okay. All right. So we'll stop talking. Y'all get that on. You can cut it up. Uh -huh. Here I go. I'm still trying to get through your hand. This is the, the most critical part of it is going around this corner, this first tight corner, because it's where the leather wants to crawl. Did I do that all right, Tony? I stopped when I talked, kind of. I don't know. It was I was trying to get, I'm trying to make sure we got this in the frame. Go slow. Right? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Don't just beat around the corner. Yeah. You, I'll, t I'll tell you what. I used to try to make, make time when I was doing this kind of stuff. And I would mess it all up. Then I'd have to go back and cut the stitches out and do it again. And a lot of times I'd have to build a whole new part. Uh, you're a lot better off to just go really slow. However slow you have to go to do the job you're trying to do. You can hand stitch this too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of times, especially if you've got a machine that doesn't want to do stuff like this, you'd be better rather than try to make your machine do something and mess it up three or four times. You need time and money ahead to go ahead and just hand stitch. Hand stitch. The stitching on this front part isn't going to show anyway. This is a hidden stitch. You just want to make sure that you get all those corners. Yeah. Otherwise, there'll be a hole in your back. Yeah. Lose your pennies. <laughs> yeah. Can't have that with our coin shortage. No. <laughs> Somebody said, do you have a penny? <laughs> no. My bag has a hole on it. And then one more back stitch. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> I'm going to back stitch three times. Three times. There's probably questions somewhere that people are asking. <laughs> All right. Just stitched. We've got one panel done. Yes. Now I'm going to pull this thread through. That's a nice looking seam there, Denny. Well, thank you very much. You did a good job. I've been getting used to, I've been sewing more than I've sewn in years in the last couple of weeks here with our videos. So I'm actually getting back to being semi-proficient at yeah. sewing things again. Well, me too. You know, I do a lot of projects, but I don't stitch a whole lot. 
He does a lot of lacing. You do a lot of lacing. I do a lot of lacing. I, yeah. I like to lace you because see. for one thing, you don't have to finish an edge when you lace. It <laughs> makes a perfect edge that's, every time. That's right. But, you know, I, I do a lot of projects, but a lot of them I don't need to stitch at all. Okay. Now, I'm going to take a square here. Actually, in this case, it's a little triangle. Not one square side. Yeah. I'm going to square across this and cut this off. Mmm. I left a lot of extra because I wasn't sure. When you make a corner like that, the inside of the corner is shorter than the outside of the corner. So you, I don't know what I'm going to come up with. And most of the projects I do are one of a kind. So... I don't have a pattern to go by. I don't have an exact dimension. So I do this. And I'm just going to cut that off. And by rights, the front should match the back. <laughs> All right. If you wanted to get real fancy and measure before this, you could have bell knife skived those edges down and then rolled them. Yes. But, you know, this would be yeah. the fact yeah. that that could have been a thing for somebody out there. But this is a rustic bag, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are pointing out the little things again, Denny. I know. I know. It's just things. You know, there's always something that you can add. Like, leather work just gets more complex. Like, you can start off with, all bags start out with a gusset, front and back panels, and then they just get more complex than from there. Yeah. Did he know you can make a simple saddle or you can make a real fancy one? That's exactly right, yeah. right there. And the simple ones are just as good as the real fancy one. Yeah. You know? Okay, now the trick here is to turn oh, this inside it. out. And this this is a this leather has a lot of body to it. So it's gonna want to fight with me. I bet, I bet you would have wished you brought your spray bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if that would have been made it wet, and it would have been harder to do. Then we but would have it, had a feet marks all over it. No, that's bad. But see, but. but see, and I and I sky or I uh, split this leather down. Yeah. If I wouldn't have split it down, it would have been a real fight. Really? Yeah, probably if you wouldn't have split it, you would have just done two butt-up seams. Right. Yeah, where you stitch like this with the edge, and then you have a, a stitch line here, and then you just finish those edges. I don't think that you would have ever been able to do that full weight. Yeah, it, well. <laughs> it wouldn't have been simple. That's for sure. Oh, uh, let's see here. Denny, did your head knife bite your thumb palm? Oh, no. There? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Here's another embarrassing story. I told Liz awesome. last week. <laughs> I was mowing the yard, and my wife has a rock garden in back with a little fish pond. It's not his rock garden anymore. No, no more. <laughs> my wife is a rock collector, by the way. But anyway, she had some cardboard by this, this rock part. And when I mowed, I hit that cardboard and just exploded it all over the rest of the yard. Of course. Made me mad. <laughs> so I stomped across these rocks. I was going to go get a leaf rake and rake all this cardboard that I'd scattered everywhere. But I was so mad, I tripped over one of the rocks and fell down and cut myself on the edge of a sharp rock. <laughs> Made me cry like a girl. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a delicate... Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a you know, it cut. never did get sore, but it bled pretty profusely yeah. for a while. But anyway, I'm healing up. I'm okay, you guys. Don't worry. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I've got that turned, if you all can see what I've got there. Look at that. Not too it shabby. looks pretty good. It makes a nice finished front to your bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and there, that's another edge you don't have to uh, to burnish yep. or to lace. It's <laughs> finished. It's just done. Yeah. Okay. Now then, let's go to the back. And there again, I've got to make myself some reference marks here. This 
this is going to be the top of that of our gusset. That's why I brought more than one pencil. <laughs> broke. It happens. And that's going to be the top on the other side. And I'm going to take my wing dividers and set them at 3 sixteenths <laughs> of an inch. Did they sure already oh, be there? I'm, I'm doing the inside. I've got messed oh. up here. Yeah, see, on the front, I, I worked on the, the finish side of the bag, and on this uh, this part, I'm working on the, the inside of the bag. And I'm still going to mark 3 sixteenths of an inch all the way around here. And I don't, and I need to do it here, too. Is that, this stitch line will show on the gusset. All right, and I've got my reference point there, and I marked a reference point, but I marked it on the wrong side of this one, so I'm going to transfer it over. And I don't need to uh, scratch this part because I'm working on the, the uh, flesh side of the leather, but I am going to glue it tremendously. <laughs> tremendously. Yeah. I'm going to take the handy dandy all purpose eraser and get some of your glue out of the little seam here. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I got to do something. <laughs> you always help. Nothing. <laughs> I almost need to skive it down into a point so I can get down, get down in there. Yeah. Well, when we get it all put together, we can actually, I can take it out and put it on that too cobbler stand uh, kind of tap that to work that out a little bit yeah work that out a little bit yeah i tell you what we talked about that foot that foot thingy that you can buy oh you need to glue this yeah. <laughs> just wait on me that little foot thing that you can buy um just at pretty much any antique store in the world because there are no cobblers anymore so all of their all of their supplies are at antique stores they're everywhere but you can buy one of those little like cast iron stands with the little feet attachments and like different shaped feet that you can put on it. Um, and there's a couple different varieties out there. Not all the feet match the same stands. Some stands are short to be mounted to a table. Some are tall that stand on the floor. I don't know. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. But man, those things are handy. Like they just come in handy. Yeah, they're just, we use them for an anvil. Yep. You know? Yep. Just a little tiny one that'll get into weird spots if you're trying to set a rivet on the inside of a bag and you forgot it or it has to be done last you know you can put it on one of those little foot things yep. that a rivet you're out shopping and you come across one of those usually they're like 15 20 bucks like yeah. they're the cheapest little thing but they are handy we're doing this and, and people are going to start buying them up and there won't be any to be found <laughs> anywhere in the world that would be impressive you guys are going to make them obsolete all right Oh, Denny, while we're waiting for glue to dry, Dustin asked, um, he just ordered his very first side, and he's hoping to supplement his income. Do we have any pointers for him? Uh, don't make a bunch of big involved projects, you know, to start out with. Make some real simple stuff. I don't know if you're wanting to just sell stuff from home or if you're going to take it to some shows like craft shows or something some like farmer's that. Farmer's market but, or something like that. Yeah. But those places, you know, it seems like small, inexpensive articles are what sells mm -hmm. a lot because people don't go wanting to buy $100 bags to a craft show. Yeah. You know, they go wanting to buy a $5 key fob or something. <laughs> or something right. You know. Right. Or maybe a belt with their name on it. You know, those seem to go good. I don't know why, <laughs> but they do. People like to advertise yeah. their, their name.
All right. I don't know how ready this cement is. I think it's about. Now I'm going to use my reference points again. Now this, you, you've got to kind of coerce this to, to do what you want it to do. So I'm going to kind of stretch it around a little bit like this. The softer the leather, the easier it is to, to do this. Thank you. You're welcome. Why didn't I think of that to begin <laughs> with? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dave asked if we know where he can get a four inch brass center bar buckle for a Santa Claus belt. Um, we, what's the largest that we sell? Because we've got those reenactment. Is it a three? I think, I think they're it's, threes. Yeah, I think it's three. I think it's a three. Okay. Yeah, so you might try the buckle guy. I know they've got quite a, they're the buckle people. So you might look up the buckle guy, uh, dot com. He's got a pretty good website. You can check him out. But then we do have some, and we call them reenactment buckles, um, some big round or square ones that we'll use for that. But I do, I think it's a three, maybe a three and a half. I think it's three. Just a three. Maybe we've got like two and a half and a three. Or just a really big belt. Or a really big buckle. Yeah, even for Santa Claus. <laughs> And he wasn't there some little person that was watching the show a while back and said that that you were Santa Claus? They finally yeah, found him. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And Tony was telling us about that. I think he was watching with a nephew or a grandkid or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Thought I was the real Santa Claus. We found him. <laughs> <laughs> he does leather during the summer. My reindeer are running loose, but right now. <laughs> uh, All right. That looks pretty good, didn't he? Yeah, I've got it cemented together. That's holding. Now, can I go back to the machine, Tony? You sure can. All right, here I go. Uh, oh, watch out for your cord. Watch there. out for your cord on your. People said they want to try to get a silent hair dryer like we got. <laughs> is that oh? <laughs> is it silent? But it is on film it or on. It compresses it right out. Liz has got it now. I don't disagree with you, Leg. <laughs> hit him. Just yeah, well, anybody was wondering. Uh, Liz's favorite saying, I don't disagree. So when you call in and put an order and she makes a suggestion, say that. She'll love it. Here I go. <laughs> I'm going to remember the backstage before you tell me. Okay, I won't say it this time. He's final. There we go. Oh. Not that I can see what you're doing. All right, don't get dizzy, everybody. Perfect. Just don't move, Denny. Liz, do you know what size shot we're using in our dead weights? If people wanted to make their own. I bird? know we just got in a shipment of some lead shot. I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe six, size six, probably the easiest. Denny says size six. Yeah, something like that. I think it's cold rolled or something like that. I remember oh, we've gone to Bass Pro a few times to buy it. Um, just when we ran out of the store. But that's been a while ago. Probably an assembly item. You could probably look it up. I could, but answer your question. <laughs> Okay. Oh. We are stitched. Watch out. Hold on. <laughs> Let's hear Robert um, asked what ounce leather are we using? We've probably got like a eight to nine ounce.
for the the main body pieces, and then I think Denny split the the gusset down to maybe like a four, four or five. Uh, a five six, a five, I think, six. is what this is. And to tell you the truth, I wish I just split it to a four or five, <laughs> but it still worked. Or maybe bell knife those two edges. It, yeah, it still worked pretty well. Now when I stitch this. Uh, my edge is not perfect, so what I'm going to do is trim a little bit of it off here, but then I'm going to have uh, Liz and Tony tell you jokes and stuff for a minute <laughs> then he's while, gonna I go go, sand it. while I go sand this. We could plug in this thing, but then it's going to make a mess. Could, yeah, it won't take me a minute. We're going to go out. We've got our drum sanders over in the shop, so yeah. he's going to go. And you can do this by hand if you wanted to. but uh, Or if you have to. Or if you have to. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't have a you still shoot? Uh -huh. sander at my house for a long while. They turned light off. Hi, Rusty. Oh, you think you're hey, Rusty. Hey, buddy. Denny's getting ready to go sand and they need jokes. They yeah, need well, jokes. we, got we need someone to tell jokes for We've a minute. we got jokes. For about, <laughs> about 90 seconds. You want to hear one? Yeah. Yes. The mail lady decided to drop the mail off five buildings down because she's scared of your dog. Five buildings down? She goes to the the, the place. The tattoo shop. Yeah. What? No. To the yeah. Yeah, I just got it. I know. Just, that's that's. Because sometimes she has a whole bunch of packages. No. 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 See, it's a funny joke. It's he just hilarious. wanted to. He wanted to blame Luna. I'll be right back. She did. She doesn't love new people. For those of you. <laughs> She's a little, she's protective of the group here. So if you do ever come in, she'll probably, she'll, she'll bark at you. She's a herding dog. She knows what she's doing. She sure. protects the herd. Herd with people. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were looking at this, this we bag that she did bag. earlier, and people were asking if we had the pattern for it. And I, I said we were getting the catalog done before oh. we get back on yeah, this patterns. Was, and This was a bag that Larissa just kind of... You know, she would she would kind of make things every once in a while just for funsies, and it, it would be something that potentially we could make a pattern for, but it's definitely, I, I don't think it's, it's really neat, though. Yeah, let me switch cameras. Yeah, I can kind of show you. So she made a removable interior, and I think this is whenever we were bringing the canvas um, on, she wanted to use uh, some of that. Uh, well, that's what kind of we had talked about doing was making it where you can make this outside with the gusset, and then you could switch yeah. out for whatever pocket that you have exactly. on the side, so... It has a ring that's in here that you can unclip. Oh, and this that, was a U thing, wasn't it? No. 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 So this one unhooks two. And then it comes out here. And then it Oh, snaps. that snaps. Yeah. It's pretty secure. Oh, ladies, my 24s are in. Yeah. I got mine out. But then you could put in a whole new pocket. You know, a whole new insert. Yeah. Kind of changing out the insert. Or if you don't need the insert and you just want an, an open bag, you could do it like this if you want to. Got a little zipper on the back. Yep. Yeah, it's a really, it's a pretty snazzy bag. Beautiful. All right. I'm back. Are you guys laughing? No, they're not laughing. There were no jokes. Didn't have one joke. Rusty came in and didn't tell no jokes either. All right. I don't know how well you all can see this, but I'm kind of proud. It turned out pretty well. Stand it up real nice. Got now I'm going to use a large bevel. Because this is pretty thick. And I don't want a real big ugly edge on this. Bevel it like this. And a beveler, when you guys are using a beveler, a lot of people say, well, it's not doing very good. A beveler will only take off so much. Uh, you know, if it's not taking any more off, you've beveled all it's going to bevel. <laughs> you know, so don't try to do more with that beveler. If you want more of an edge, use a, a bigger size beveler. Oh, I'm going to use this stuff.
Let's see here. Zero. Ha <laughs> ha. That's pretty funny, actually. Um, he sent us a joke. He said, did you know Bruce Lee had a vegetarian brother? His name was Brocco Lee. <laughs> Brocco Lee. <laughs> That's pretty good, buddy. <laughs> Rocco Lee. So you're showing that bag, and they're like, "How would you do it with the without any insert in it?" But oh, on the uh, let me. I'm gonna switch to that camera. Okay. But we would just make this with a D ring on it. Yeah. Let me switch. I'll switch that one over there on that side. Okay. Yeah, so instead of instead of having the strap come through here, you would just have um, this top piece would have a D-ring attached to it here that the strap would clip onto. So you might make the strap, you know, a little bit shorter because you're losing several inches of or length. You did, or, you, I mean, you could just attach a D-ring down here if you wanted. Well, the insert that's in there, don't put the inside pockets on it and just have, like, a false side on either side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could you could mount this D ring to something on the inside as well, but like a strap that goes across, and you could rivet it in on each side right, or something. Right, because it's snapped at the top too. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, but you just wouldn't do you just wouldn't do that. Yeah. So sew that down or whatever you want to do. But yeah, we'll make a pattern for it. That's what Tony says. Or maybe we'll take a part and construct one on here. Liz can construct one. We're going to wait till Clayton's arm is healed, and then we'll make him do that. Yeah. He, we found out that he's not real good at skateboarding. He said he was doing a pretty good move. I don't know. Yeah. And then he just fell down. <laughs> what matters is if you get back up again. I rode, I rode a bicycle for the first time in about 15 years this past weekend, and I also I hit a stick. And I was breaking, and I, I kind of crashed. But it was okay. It was pretty slow motion. It was fine. You're not sewing anymore, are you, Denny? No. I That's believe good. I'm done so. Uh, will you show what you're using to do the edges and what you just did? I am using Toco Pro. Definitely. And if you guys would have been watching me. <laughs> Instead of just jabbering. <laughs> I'm using Toco Pro, and I just put some on a piece of canvas. Just just dipped it in here, and I I rubbed it on the uh, the actual uh, flesh side of this bag, and it lays the nap down, and makes a nice slick, pasted look finish. Put a little more on. You got a little blobby on this gusset over here. Okay. <laughs> you can see there how it just kind of pastes that nap down and gives it a finished look. Yes, I did have a blobby. <laughs> blobby. But this stuff is real good on an oil tan leather or 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 just a chrome tan leather. Mm -hmm. Marcus said you are using a generous amount of it. You probably yeah. wouldn't even have to use that much. He said, I guess when you don't have to really pay for it. Well, <laughs> if you want, all right, if you want it to do some good, you have to put enough on there where it matters. Sure. That's all I can say. Yeah, and you burnish it. <laughs> you know, uh, if if you if you aren't getting a good burnish out of it, it's because you haven't used enough of the material. And you really got to get it up in there. That's going to soak into those fibers. Yeah. And seal it. Okay. That's that. We've got a gusset in our bag. What time is it? It is noon. Noon. How fast I is that guess... trap? Or do you okay, want? To... Okay. Yeah. Let me. I won't finish the, I won't put the strap on, I don't think, but let's finish it. All right, what I've done, I've just cut a strap, and there again, I I uh, uh, split this down a little bit, but you wouldn't have to. I split it down a little bit, then I took, a, this is a one-inch strap, and I took a one-inch bag punch, and I punched along here, one, each, each punch is one inch from the other one, right? Okay. Now... I am going to uh, use some bleed knots here. I'm so excited, right? I just realized that he was going to do that just now. <laughs> Let me see here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go like this.
if I can do this the way I practiced. <laughs> Hey, Denny, Razor Blades has a joke for you. All right, Razor Blade, let's hear it. How can you tell a dogwood tree from any other tree? You got me. It's bark. <laughs> oh, that's a good. That's one. very good. All right. We have a lot of dogwoods around here. That's our state yes. tree. We have two different kinds. We have a Coosa dogwood. I did that backwards. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I want the, the tip to be out on the top edge. So I'll go like that. Then I'm going to go down through like this. Nope, I'm not. <laughs> got to figure out how we did it. Well, you got to think about what you're doing, and that's hard for me. <laughs> Especially when you're so nervous and sweating. Isn't that what you said earlier? Yeah. It makes my wrist green. <laughs> so there was a question for me that was on there and it had to do with what cameras that we use. Uh huh. So we actually have four cameras set, set up in the room and one microphone that's just over the table. So I think maybe if we got another one, since we're using the sewing machine a lot more, to point one in a different direction because the one that we're using is a directional microphone. But we have two Sony A6000s, one Sony A6500, and one Sony ZX1, and that's the overhead camera, is the ZX1. We apparently really like our Sonys up in here. Yep. Yeah. That's a whole nother video. <laughs> All right. Now I've actually done this, I think. <laughs> Did we actually get there? Yeah. Well, maybe now that you don't have to think about it so much, I think we only listed one of those two dogwood trees, and now I'm curious to know what the other one is. One's a regular, I guess, Missouri dogwood. The other one is okay. a Coosa dogwood. A Coosa dogwood. And the Missouri dogwood, the, the little leaves... I missed a slot there. The Missouri dogwood, the, the petals on the flower have a little divot on the end. Okay. And the Coosa dogwood does not. It's just a pointed, pointed petal, hmm. petal on each leaf. Well, I learned something. And I, I have that. The only reason I know that, for one reason, my wife showed me a Coosa dogwood. <laughs> and another reason, I have a, a flower pattern that I use a lot, which is a Coosa. Oh. Have you guys ever... I know we've talked a little bit about before... Toco Pro and Toco Nall. Mostly the difference is it's just one brand. Yeah, versus it's a, it's yeah. a brand name. Yeah. Yes. Because otherwise they're, they're very, very similar products. Are you going to show us what you're doing or are you just going to do it? I don't Punk think you can. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing. No, okay. We are bleed knotting right. two pieces together, which is more complicated than just doing kind of one on its own. All right. And we don't have a camera up on top. Oh, here. Do you want this? Yeah. Yeah, we're still yeah, good. Yeah, you're, you're good. Okay. Now I'm just going to kind of pound these flat. This is the part that's going to be on your shoulder. This will be basically on top of your shoulder. A whole shoulder pad. All right. Now then, without these other little slots, I'm just going to run this through itself. And like make a twist. That. Yeah, make a twist. Let's, next time you pull one through... I think it's over here. What do we got there? Can you see it now? No. Can you see what you're doing. Where do I need to be? <laughs> it's right back. in the middle. I'll use the overhead camera. Okay. There you go. So he's just running it. Yeah, I'm just turning the back it through to the front. itself. Yeah. You want to do it, and it doesn't make it matter if you go from back to front or front to back, as long as you do it the same on a, on the whole deal. And he's just twisting, just twisting the yeah. leather. It gives it kind of a braided look.
Uh, somebody asked how long the straps are. We will know that when we're done doing this. You know, <clears throat> I'm making this kind of a crossbody strap, mm -hmm. and I've never known exactly how long a crossbody strap is supposed to be. So, and when we get done, we'll have you try it on. <laughs> we'll see, see what, what we have. Think. I always figured this 48 inches was about right, but I could be wrong. There we go. I try to make my stuff very adjustable. <laughs> <laughs> the one size fits all leather crafter. Yeah. And that never works. <laughs> <laughs> Angela is asking if we had any new items or sale items or so on and so forth. On the website, we have the sales thing, and there is now a closeouts, flash sales, and what's the other one that's on there? Steals and deals. Oh, oh, steals and deals. And then also, if you go... Under the shop now, there is a place where you can click on new items. And I... I did just put some new items in it yesterday or the day before. Yeah, we're, we're constantly moving new stuff through. Um, and then if you want to know what's new, sign up uh, Sign up on our website for our newsletter, um, our email newsletter. It goes out. Um, we've got a big one that goes out twice a week on Sundays, I believe, um, that will kind of show you all the new stuff that we've been releasing over the past or that we've accumulated Um in the two weeks prior to that um, and then it'll also usually have some sales stuff and list the videos that we've done just in case you missed one of those um, but yeah go to our website and sign up for our, our newsletters I think what do we have two or three now that we send out uh, flash sale email on Tuesdays and then the newsletter every other week Okay, yeah, so we, we don't overload your inbox, so you don't have to worry about getting something from us every day, but every every two weeks we'll send you just our newsletter with, with our new stuff and that kind of thing, and then every Wednesday we have a flash sale. So, Tuesday. every Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday, Tuesdays. Wednesday we, we do have the What's Up Wednesday. Yeah, that that's a social. social. So, yeah, so take a look on Tuesdays. Um, you can receive an email with the whatever sale we're running for that week, and it's usually like two or three items. Um, and then Wednesdays on social, we have our flash sales. We do a lot, you know. How big were the pieces that you started with, Denny? One inch. No, 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 how long? I don't know. We don't know. Let's see here. Some you got an eight-foot table. Oh, now you won't know. You've got it all braided up. And do you like four? It's like half. Yeah. Maybe well, a little bit more. you lose a little bit of length, but it's also very stretchy. You know, put this over here. <laughs> it's perfect. Whatever it's you perfect. did, it's perfect. Yeah, and see, little... it'll go through the, I'll put a loop in the bag, and it'll turn back like that. And you can put two or three holes up, you know, where you can adjust it up or down. Mm -hmm. You just got to put that That's pretty comfy. Yeah. That's not bad. About four, four and a half feet. You could probably make, that could probably be like a shotgun shell bag or something like that. Sure. Sure. And you can put a little closure on it. I brought We're one in here, to. but, but to, you know, I was going to put a little closure on it. A little mag. Yep. Yeah. So just a little clasp. Yeah. All righty. Well, are we going to finish this up next week? Yeah, I'll finish it up and, oh, and bring we'll it into it. where you can show them on Wednesday. Okay. Maybe. Sounds good. You, Denny, you had some, uh, some idea of Friday next for next week yeah uh kevin was saying he wanted me to uh use some of this uh medina torres uh, harness leather that we have which is really nice leather it cuts like butter but i'm gonna make a a head stall with it and a flank cinch out of it so there so are our natural our natural harness double shoulders and coladas yeah. if you wanted to look them up they're in the catalog and they're also on the website um, so we'll be using that leather to make some horse stuff. Yeah, they really aren't long enough to make any nice reins. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people want to eight foot sides, you know, to make reins out yeah. of harness leather, but these aren't long enough for that. But boy, they are. It's beautiful, nice leather. It make great head stalls and, and stuff like that. So. And your back cinch? Yeah. Or flank cinch? Yeah, a flank cinch, a back cinch, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, we're going to finish yeah. this guy up. And then uh, we'll have it next week. Oh, hey, yeah. did we want to give away something today? Last minute-ish? No, maybe. Do we want to give away the clutch? 
Yeah. Or do I just want to pick somebody? Do we just maybe? So we're going to. I gonna... think I want to pick somebody because Tony's she comments somebody. a lot and we kind of talk back and forth. And Tony's got somebody in mind for the clutch that I, so Terry and I made this past Wednesday. Her, let's put her name up there. Okay. Oh, she she me. gave a suggestion of how she does for her crossbody stretch. So. Came out pretty well, got it all edged. That is a beautiful clutch. All right, there you go. Okay, Molly Armstrong. Molly, we are going to be sending this beautiful clutch your way. Thanks for participating so much in our in our online. She's there. Stuff. She's on Facebook every every video. So just shoot us a direct message there, Molly, and we'll get yeah. you we'll get you this clutch out. And she also says that the size she cuts her uh, crossbody straps are uh, depending on the size of the woman, forty eight inches, and that's about what we have. So. Yep. Yep. We're on point. And awesome. that is not toolable leather. No. No. No, it's no. done. Yeah, you could use you could use a, a vegetable tan leather to do the same thing we did. You could put a patch on it yep. and tool the patch. It's true. Awesome. All right. Well, Denny, is there anything else that we need to go over here this afternoon? I don't know. Uh, in the future, another thing that uh, Kevin was saying that he would like to see, he's got some... Uh, Italian vegetable tan leather, which is really nice. It's, it's a nice finished leather that uh, we made some uh, dress belts out of, and he was saying maybe do one of those. But that's in the future. In uh, the future. Can, can you show a close up on the on the clutch? Yeah. Uh, I'll put it. It's kind of right out in front of you there. No. No. This. This one over here. This one right that's here. Beautiful. There we go. That is pretty. That's what we got. And that's what we did on Wednesday. Terry and Liz put that together on Wednesday. So yeah. this is our. So this is an interior that you can buy from us, and then something that you could you could build. So look how the back turned out, Denny. When I know. It came together. The feather. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The feather. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to nice. see, but like the feather kind of matches up with the design underneath. Yeah. I didn't know that I cut them like that, but it worked out okay. Way to go, Liz. Yeah. Yeah. It looks just like wallpaper. Exactly. You've got to match the seams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You did well. We've, we've also talked about doing like um, some easy summer type of crafts that somebody could do, like sunglass holder or. Okay. Well, we like will that. come up with some fun little stuff. And if yeah. you guys have any ideas of. Like a fish fly. Oh, like a fly fishing. So you, it's got like wool on the inside. You can put your flies in oh, there and then. Fly book. Like yeah. a fly, fly book, fly yeah. wallet. Sure. I'd love to do that. I know you would. <laughs> didn't you? We're not going to be giving that one away, are we? <laughs> Maybe the first one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Well, we will see you next week. Yep. Thanks for joining us, and have a good weekend. It was fun again.